Okay, welcome back to Repent slash Repentance Word Study. Uh, this one's going to be on the book of Judges. So if you want to turn to Judges chapter 2, we're going to start at verse 1. So, uh, Judges chapter 2, verse 1. We're going to read 1 through 17. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars. But ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Now if you read before... God promised to drive out all the inhabitants of the land that's promised to the Jewish people, the 12 tribes. Okay? He promised to drive them all out. But Israel didn't. Where, verse 3, Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as a thorn in your side, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. Remember this. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord, capital L, Lord, spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of the place Bokim, and they sacrificed there unto the Lord. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man into his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the day of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. Remember this. Joshua saw the amazing work that the Lord did for Israel. Even getting coming out of uh, Egypt the uh, when they wandered in the wilderness and... Joshua leading the people to take all the land of the inhabitants to the twelve tribes. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being a hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timoth Hiras, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gash. Some of these names I know, some of them I'm guessing. Uh, Verse 10, And also all the generations were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam. Now, if you stop there for a second, can we apply that to today? Uh, what God did for America, what God did for Christians, Christianity, you know, when the King James Bible came out, going all over the world with missionaries, uh, the Word was getting out, the Gospel was getting out, uh, revival, people living right, doing right, and after generation after generation, look at today, nobody wants anything to do with the King James Bible. Nobody wants anything to do with living right according to God's Word. Our nation's corrupt. Uh, other nations are corrupt. We're getting closer and closer to the end. Sodomy's running rampant. And uh, we'll get into that here later. Uh, sodomy's running rampant. Um, sexual perversion. Um, feeding the flesh. I mean, everything has gotten so bad, generation after generation forgets about the previous generation. And they think they know how to do things better, and they do things their way, and everything falls apart. Verse 12, And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers. The other thing is today, how many false gods are out there today? Okay, False gods are everywhere. False Jesus, antichrists are everywhere. Uh, back to uh, 12, And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods, lowercase g gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them. Got to stay focused on this. God was going to help them drive out all the people around them, but they didn't. 
And what happened because they didn't? They were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. They brought in false gods from them. And the New Testament talks about how we're not to fellowship with the lost world. Why? I believe part of it, a big part of it, is this right here. You start fellowshipping with the lost world, these Babel buildings inviting lost people in, you're inviting Satan in, false gods. You're inviting wickedness in. That's why the Bible commands us that we're not to be unequally yoked with the lost world. Amen. Verse 13, And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. 14, And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hand of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. 15. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. These are the two key verses along with uh, verse 3. Wouldn't drive the people out like he promised. This is when we get to the repentance, it's a change in providence. And these two verses right here, 14 and 15, letting those people um, deliver them into the hands of spoilers that spoil them, sold them into the hands of their enemies, verse 14, round about. Verse 15, uh, the Lord said, let's see, whosoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. Okay. Now, 16, Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hands of those that spoiled them. We'll find out why he lifted up judges. 17, And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods, and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandment of the Lord, but they did not so. Okay. Verse 18, 18 and 19 is where we want to get to. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judges and delivered them out of the hands of their enemies all the days of the judges. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. He said that he was going to let those inhabitants that they wouldn't drive out come in and do bad things to them. Verse 19, And it came to pass... When the judges were was dead, that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers, in following the gods, lowercase g gods, to serve them and to bow down unto them, they cease not from their own doings, nor from their stubborn ways. So repentance here is a change of providence. Uh, definition number four. Um, he was going to drive them all out. Now he's not going to drive them all out. So they come in, he's going to allow them to come in, and they're going to deliver them to the hands of spoilers that spoil them and to be sold into the hands of their enemies round about. But through all this punishment that's going on, God repents because he made judges. And it's funny that uh, and when the judges were there judging them and telling Israel, you're to obey God, they, they don't always hearken to their judges. But it says here that delivered them out of the hands of their enemies all the days of the judges. So there's a change in providence where you're always going to be in the hands of the enemies. Well, now I'm going to make judges so they can deliver you out of the hands of the enemies. So a change in providence. And the biggest thing, if you go to chapter 3, we're going to read a few verses, starting at verse 1. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel from them. So he left people in the heavens to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan, only that the, the generation of the children of Israel might know to teach them war that the least such a, that at the least such as before knew nothing thereof, namely five lords of the Philistines, all the Canaanites and the Sidians and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lib Libyan from Mount 
Behoman unto the entering in of Hamath, and they were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. Okay. Repentance was based primarily in this context off of God just going to say, I'm going to let them just, you know, terrorize you basically, the inhabitants, and screw you up because you wouldn't drive them out and you made deals with them and you brought in their false gods and started worshiping false gods. But part of it also you realize is that he was going to drive all the inhabitants out of the land and now he's not because they didn't drive them out. Um, they didn't drive all the inhabitants. They left some of them there making deals with them and bringing in false gods. God's like, okay, at this point, I'm not going to drive them out anymore. I'm going to leave these four here to prove you. So that is the context of repent in Judges chapter 2, verse 18. Now we're going to jump over to Judges. This is going to be a long one. We got to get in context. And the wind is out today. I hope it's not affecting the camera. We're going to go to Judges 19. We're going to read 15 through 30. Okay, you have a traveler that's traveling. And we're going to start at uh, verse 15. And they're in Gibeah, that's owned by the uh, tribe of Benjamin. Verse 15, And they turned aside thither to go in and lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat him down in a street of the city, for there was no man that took them into his house to lodging, and behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even, even, which was also of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah. But the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted, when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city, and the old man said, Whither goest thou? And whence comest thou? And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, towards the side of the Mount Ephraim. From thence am I, and I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord, and there is no man that receiveth me to house. Yet there is both straw and provender for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me and for thy handmaid. And for the young man which is with thy servants, there is no want of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with thee, house, howsoever let all thy wants lie upon me. Only lodge not in the street. Now if you can look back to Sodom and Gomorrah, what did... Um, my brain freezes sometimes. Uh, lot. Uh, what did Lot say to the angels? He had he kept pressing on him, pressing on him, do not um, uh, lodge in the streets, because they were going to stay in the streets all night. And it's funny, because we're going to get into this, about it's, it's taught, stories talking about sodomy, and it's talking about rape. And the street corners is where you find, you know, back in the day you found uh, prostitutes on the street corners, a lot of bad things would happen on the streets, to men and women uh, when you're out at night when they're supposed to be at home. So he's saying, you know, do not lodge in the streets. Verse 21, So he brought him into his house and gave provender unto the asses, and they washed their feet and did eat and drink. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Bilia, Biliel, they set the house round about, and beat at the door, and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. Talking about sodomy. 
So sodomy was going on in Israel at this time with uh, among the Benjamites. Verse 23, And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is come into mine house, do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter and maid, and his concubine, the concubine of the man that was visiting, them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you, but unto this man do not so vile a thing. Okay. Sodomy is an abomination in the sight of God, and out of all sexual perversion, it's the worst. Period. And America has welcomed sodomy in with open arms. And that's why this country, I believe, is one of many reasons they turn their back on the book, which is the number one reason, and they start inviting wicked sin in, sodomy being a big one. Verse 25, But the men would not hearken to him, so the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning, and when the day began to spring, they let her go. Basically, I know these are tough words for some people, they raped her. Verse 26, Then came the woman in the dawning of the day, and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was, till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning, and opened the doors of the house, and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house, and her hand was upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up, and let us be going. But none answered. She was dead. Then the man took, up, took her up upon an ass, and the man rose up and got him unto his place. We're going to find out later that, yes, sodomy is an abomination, and it is wicked, and God deals so harshly. Read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, but we're going to find out that God deals harshly with rape as well. Verse 29, And when he was come into his house, he took a knife, and laid hold on his concubine, and divided her together with her bones into twelve pieces, and sent her unto all the coast of Israel. And it was so, that all that saw it said, There was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt, unto this day, consider of it, take advice, and speak ye your minds. Just speak your minds. We read this to get in context, to know what's going on, what Israel's response is, and why the word repent is being used. So, we know the wicked, wicked deed that was done here. Turn to, actually, this the next chapter, chapter 20, we're going to read verse 13. Now, Israel, as you read through here, Israel gets an army together, the other 11 tribes get together, and they're outside this city that they're in, and they're telling them, we're going to read it here real quick, uh, verse 13, Now therefore deliver us the men, the children of Belial, I keep butchering that word, Belial is what I want to say, but I think it's Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. Okay, They went in to this city and said, hey, give us the people who did the wicked crime. Okay, A party wants to look at this like God being a righteous judge and having Israel do right. They're not going to kill everybody because not everybody committed this wicked deed. Maybe they didn't know about these people doing the wicked deed. So they just said, Give us the people that are guilty. We're, we're not going to kill everybody. We just want the people that are guilty. Here's their response. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. I believe at this point, they became responsible for the sins of those people, um, the children of Belial. They, became, they knew about it. At this point, I believe they knew about it and they were sheltering them and trying to defend them for this wicked sin that they did. They became as guilty as they were, and now they're going to be held accountable to the same punishment as they are. 
So, 14, But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah to go out to battle against the children of Israel. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at the time out of the cities twenty and six thousand men that drew sword besides the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered seven hundred chosen men. Now, as you read through here, you're going to read through here the study of how the war was done. They sent in a group of people to fight. They, they failed against Benjamin, and they fled, and they asked God, should we send a group up again? And they did, only the second time they had a group on the, let's say they had a group over here, to the right side of the city, hiding, and then they sent a group to the city and said, hey, go fight with them a little bit, and then act like you're, basically act like you're fleeing. So the second time the Benjamins came out, pride got the better of them, and they're saying they're fleeing like they did the first time. Let's chase them down. So they went, left the city and started chasing that army down, and the army over here that was hidden, Victoria, the army over here that was hidden, they snuck in and destroyed the city. They killed everything in the city. Everyone in the city, every animal, they put the city aflames. They destroyed it utterly. And the Benjamites, when they turned and looked back and saw that their city was on fire, they stopped chasing the army and turned to start, to start coming back. And that's when the army here of the Israels, the other 11 tribes, jumped on them and pounced on them and started uh, destroying them. Uh, jumped down to 46. Uh, verse 46. So that all which fell that day of Benjamin were twenty and five thousand men that drew the sword. All these were men of valor. Now notice, it doesn't include the city. This doesn't include the number of everybody they destroyed in the city. This has to do with those that came out to fight in war. Actually, you know what? It probably is both. I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. Both. But 40, verse 47 because it says in that day, I mean, I'm the one that always saying words have meaning, but in that day. Uh, but 600 men turned and fled to the wilderness unto the rock Rimeon, and abode in the rock Rimeon four months. So out of 26,000 men, 25,000 plus, a little bit more, but 25,000 men were killed for two reasons because they would not give up the men the men who deserved to die were the men that actually committed the bad wicked deed and they wouldn't give them up so those men were supposed to come out and die because, so the wicked deeds was the reason there was death was warranted punishment was death and the reason so many of them had to die was because they condoned it there was nothing wrong with it we're going to defend these men there's nothing wrong with what they did so they all took on the penalty for the few people that did it, the whole city, the whole tribe of Benjamin got punished. For, uh, 600 men survived. That's how much God takes that seriously. He takes rape just as serious as he takes sodomy. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to get to the part with repentance in it. So turn to Judge 21.6. So we have set... Oops. 21.6. We've set the scene, as they say, to get the context. So we know the wicked deed that was done. We know the punishment that they had to endure. Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, is almost wiped out. There's only 600 left. So verse 6. And the children of Israel repented them for Benjamin, their brother, and said, There is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. So they look at what they did. And it was just, but they, repentance here, um, definition number three, to change the mind and consequence of the inconvenience or injury done by past conduct. So instead of wiping them out completely, because they could have gone and wiped out the last 600 people, killed them. But they repented. They changed, saying, you know what? We need a 12th tribe. Mm -hmm. There's one tribe cut off from Israel today. So jump down to 15, we're going to read 15 through 17. We're going to read 
they're going to repent again, showing how they're not going to wipe them out like they had planned. They changed their mind, but also what they did to save that tribe. Verse 15, And the people repented them for Benjamin, because that the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. Then the elders of the congregation said, How shall we do for wives for them that remain, seeing the women are destroyed out of Benjamin? And they said, There must be an inheritance for them that be escaped of Benjamin, that a tribe be not destroyed out of Israel. Verse 18, we're going to keep going. Howbeit we may not give them wives of our daughters, for the children of Israel have sworn, saying, Cursed be he that giveth a wife to Benjamin. Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh yearly, and a place which is on the north side of Bethel, on the side, east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel to Shechem, Shechem and on the south of Lebanon. Therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go and lie in wait in the vineyards, and, and see, and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in dances, then come ye out of the vineyards, and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh, and go to the land of Benjamin. So, they repented, change of mind, of consequence. They went from, I'm going to wipe them out, to, okay, we don't want to wipe them out. We want to keep the inheritance going that the Lord had promised. Um, so they made a way for them to have wives, so the tribe of Benjamin gets to keep going. So I put definition number three, to change the mind and consequence of inconvenience or injury done by past conduct. The injury is we're going to lose a tribe, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. So um, thank you for watching. Uh, those are the context. Once again, the first one. Uh, when the Lord repents, it doesn't mean He sinned. There are times when we repent, it doesn't mean we're sinning. It means we're going to change our mind. We're going to do something, and we realize the consequences, so we decided, you know, we're not going to do it. And then there's repentance when it comes to, hey, we're sinning, we're living in wicked sin, and we need to repent to God, acknowledging that we're sinning against Him, and we don't want His wrath on us. Okay? And then there's re biblical repentance, which is, I'm realizing repentance is a, as a New Testament word. It might still be in the Old Testament. We're going to keep going and find out. And I'm doing these studies book by book as we go through together. So the terms in here, we got the context of repentance. I'll see you guys, my brothers and sisters, in the next video.